volunteers uh, help out, um, I'll show you a form. So that um, the developers have time to actually go and develop the software itself. Um, but we are all pretty active in this community, supporting users. Um, so this is the forum. It's really great. Highly recommend using it if you have problems with Let's Encrypt or CertBot. Um, uh, so other things about being an open source developer. Um, lots of people use your project, which is great. People are always coming up to you and being like, oh my god, I love CertBot. I love Let's Encrypt. Thank you for the work you do. Um, uh, one downside of having or working on a really high profile project um, that gets lots of attention is uh, sometimes you do get uh, like negative comments or rude comments and that's a thing you have to deal with. Um, that's pretty rare. Um, one other uh, uh, one other cool part of being an open source develop uh, developer is there are many opportunities for mentoring people all over the world like people you've never met. Um, and it's, uh, it's really cool to watch someone go from not really like understanding um, how to implement something to like, or, like walking them through the process of like implementing a feature and like giving them feedback on the pull request. And, and it's really cool that you're not just doing that like with coworkers that are like in your office, but with like people all over the world. Um, and it's a great way to make friends. I have definitely um, befriended some of the people who I've like worked with remotely on open source projects. Um, one other downside of uh, working on a really high profile like project where everyone's watching you is um, everyone is watching like everything you do. Um, so in the beginning, I definitely felt some like pressure to do a really good job and not mess up. Um, as you can see uh, in GitHub. 816 people are watching the project, so that means every time like one of us posts a comment or makes a pull request, um, 800 people get an email about that, <laughs> which was a bit intimidating in the beginning, um, but now it's okay. <laughs> um, so the project we're working on today is called CertBot, um, from the description on GitHub. CertBot, previously the Let's Encrypt client, is the EFF's tool to obtain certs from Let's Encrypt and optionally auto-enable HTTPS on your server. Um, it can also act as a client for any other certificate authority that uses the ACME protocol. Um, so, uh, since this is our first live stream, we picked really small issues to implement um, and small pull requests to review. Um, eventually, uh, if this one's successful and uh, people like it, we will we will do more in the future. Um, so most of the tasks I'll be working on today are around certificate management. Uh, so like managing certificates on your server or like uh, checking the status of your certificates, stuff like that. Um, uh, what else? And I'll try to explain what I'm doing as I go along. Um, but uh, there will be times where I'm like silent and thinking because I am in fact actually trying to get work done. Um, and every 15 minutes or so, I'll check back um, to the chat uh, window, um, but I don't want to be too distracted by it. I think I'll mostly check it when I'm running tests. So if you have um, any questions, uh, feel free to ask them in the chat, and I will answer them every 15 minutes or so. And also, I think some of my coworkers are watching the chat, and they can answer um, the question, any questions you have if like I'm too busy. Um, and I know everyone's, I know this is going to come up. People are going to ask what text editor I'm using. So I'm just going to post it in the chat now. I'm using Vim. And uh, the, <coughs> the main plugin you'll see me using is called Vim Fugitive. And it's my favorite Vim plugin. Um, it lets you see like who last edited what lines in the file. And I mostly use it to figure out uh, where I was making changes most re recently if I like close and reopen a file. Um, OK, let's get started. So um, let's start with looking at a pull request that I have assigned to me. Um, so this is pretty straightforward. Uh, 
So we just, so someone opened an issue um, saying we should replace instances of is instance x string with is instance x six dot string types, and this is for the sake of being compatible with both Python 2 and 3. Um, So I'm just going to read these comments. Um, and you can see that this issue had a good first issue tag on it. Um, so if you want to get started uh, working on our project, or I think most projects on GitHub um, now use the good first issue label uh, to mark issues that are good for beginners or for like first time contributors. Um, okay, so let's look at this person's pull request. Um, so I see that despite it being like fairly simple, the tests on Travis are failing. Um, Okay, and this person thinks that the Travis errors are not due to the changes in the pull request that they made. Okay. Okay. So I see here they've um, changed some of the type documentation we have. Um, yep, this looks fine. This also looks fine. Yep, this looks fine. Okay, so these changes are pretty straightforward. Let's see what's wrong with the tests and why they're failing. So I see that two of the integration tests have failed, um, but it seems like none of our unit tests have failed, um, which means that the code this person submitted is probably correct, and that there's something else going on, which is why the tests are failing. Sorry, Travis is a bit slow. Okay. Okay. So right now the um, Docker image that these tests are run are just is just being built. Um, Okay, dependencies are being installed. Okay, and here something was wrong. Okay, so it's trying to download this package called Nose, which we use for parallelizing our tests. And it says that it cannot fetch index base URL which is interesting, because um, that's what the base URL has always been. No distributions at all found for nodes. Okay, so let's um, see what's going on. So I've already um, checked out uh, this person's code locally. Um, let me double check that was their username. Yes, MVIX. Um, and so the integration tests that are failing, or like the Docker image that they're using, is in here, maybe? Yeah. 
Um, so I think two of them are failing. One was uh, Debbie and Wheezy, and the other is Precise. So let's start with Wheezy. Um, okay, so let's let's build everything uh, in this Docker file up to the command that we know fails. So let's see what happens when we try pip install nodes. Okay. Again, same error. Good. Uh, so let's see what the logs say. And root dot pip. Oops. Dot log. Oh, vim isn't installed. No. This is a common problem I have with Docker. I always try to use vim. Whoa. Vi is not installed. Okay, I'm going to install vim. Okay, so it's downloading, unpacking those, getting this page. Could not fetch URL. Huh, HTTP error 403, SSL is required. Okay, um, so it's failing because um, it seems SSL is required and the URL it's using is HTTP only. Um, That's very, it's very fitting that this problem is happening during like a CertBot live stream because CertBot is a tool for like encouraging people to use like SSL and HTTPS. Um, okay, how do I make pip use HTTPS? Is there a pip help? Yes, there is. Pip. The usage is pip command options. Pip help install. Okay. Let's see which one of these options can be used to force pip to use HTTPS instead of HTTP. So version help for both quiet. Proxy, no timeout, exists action. I have no idea what this is. File name, nope. Okay, this has a URL in it. Find links URL. URL to look for packages at. This one also has a URL, index URL. Base of URL of Python package index. Ah, and here's the default. HTTP, yeah, this is the one it was um, giving us an error for. So maybe if we try, so if we try pip install, um, right, right, and that doesn't work because I forgot to add the S. Okay, um, so that seems to fix the problem. Um, so I suppose. Hold on a second. Um, we need to. Option. 
Oh, actually, I just realized I'm doing this. I'm making these changes that fix the problem um, all on like that person's branch with the pull request. So I'm going to actually switch to another branch. I name the branch. Get check out. Um, Docker. Yes. Okay. Um. Oh, I'm already in that directory. So. Uh, what was the flag again? Index something? Index URL. Yes. Uh, so I just ran pip help install uh, outside of the Docker image for the like old version of Debian. <coughs> and I can see that uh, in these newer ones, uh, the default is now, in fact, uh, HTTPS, which is good. Um, whoa, that's not what I meant to do. <laughs> okay. Um, I wonder if there's a way to set pip environment variables. Because um, if anyone modifies this Docker file to, um, for like for there to be more pip dependencies, <coughs> they'll all have to set this flag. Um, pip um, environment variable. So you just take whatever was in your flag and you change it to this format. You add pip at the front. Okay. So we want pip index URL uh, How do I tell Docker to Docker? Oh yeah, cool, I've looked at it before. This is quite what I want. I want it in the Docker file. Environment. Environment variables declared with the env statement. Okay, so I just add env in front of it. All right. Okay, I'm gonna move this. Okay, let's see if our if we can build this uh, Docker image. Cool, it didn't crash on installing those. Um, and what was the other the other one it failed on? Um, okay, it was precise. Is the whole log? Uh, 
Uh -huh. Yes, again, it's failing on nose and it's looking for it. <coughs> it's trying to download the package using HTTP. Alright, seems to be the same problem. So I think we, if we just um, modify the other Docker file. So it's interesting that this person uh, who submitted this pull request five days ago encountered this error, but I haven't seen any other pull requests with this problem. Oh wait, maybe this one. It's also from five days ago. Let's see if other tests are failing because of the same problem on other pull requests. Okay, well, a lot of tests are failing here, um, but also um, these two, the same integration tests, are failing. So let's see if it's the same problem that is affecting everyone who submits pull requests. News. Yep. It is indeed. Okay. So person who submitted this pull request was correct um, in guessing that the Travis errors are not due to their changes. Good job, random open source contributor. Um, okay. Let's, um, let's make a pull request. Um, actually, let's Let's run the tests to make sure they actually work. Oops. Okay. Um, so while I am waiting for the tests to run, let's see if anyone's posted any questions in the chat. did not get answered. Okay, still waiting for the tests to run. Okay, they're done. Yep. 
make sure I'm on the right branch. Yep. Um, forcing to use HTTPS on older Docker images. Okay, and let's push that to GitHub. Okay, and let's make a pull request for it, and that will automatically run all the tests on Travis. Um, I have so many tabs. Uses. Okay, it's PyPy, I think. Yeah. Where is my comment? first pull request and let's tell this contributor that it is in fact not their fault that the tests are failing. I'll come back to reviewing this pull request um, <clears throat> when the changes um, that I've just submitted are merged, <clears throat> and we can run this person's tests. Okay.
Okay, so let's see. Um, so I have some issues reserved for the live stream under the label live stream. Okay, so these are our options. We can show inspiration, expiration and renew, renew dates and cert bot renew output. We can add some documentation, that's kind of boring. We can implement authorization deactivation in Acme. That sounds kind of hard. <laughs> um, and also like we'd have to read, we'd have to spend quite a bit of time reading the Acme spec. Um, oh, also I just remembered, totally unrelated. The reason why uh, this uh, live stream is on Halloween is because I am dressed as Certbot. Yeah. <laughs> I almost forgot. <laughs> okay, um, back to implementing, picking something to implement. Um, so this one wouldn't be too hard. Modify the revoke subcommand to also accept cert name. Um, uh, oh, also before I start this, I should mention that the live stream will, I'll probably uh, stop streaming ar around 11.30, um, cause that will be about an hour in length. And I think that's a good amount of time for the first stream. Um, I'll just post a comment about that. Oops. Okay. So some background. Um, so I've spent a lot of time working on um, s the intersection of like certificate management and revoking certificates. Um, so. Let's make a branch for this issue. Um, revoke cert name. That's what we'll call it. Um, so, um, just some background. Uh, sometimes you may want to revoke um, your SSL certificates. Um, there's a variety of reasons why you'd want to do this. Um, the most common ones uh, seem to be like your private key was leaked, and so now you need to revoke your cer certificate and get a new one, because um, otherwise people could impersonate you. Um, or say you no longer control that domain, or you're like transferring ownership of the domain, um, and you just you want to invalidate the certificates that you have. Um, so that's why you might revoke a certificate. Um, so. Cert bot help revoke. Let's start here. Um, so the usage uh, for the revoke subcommand right now is you have to pass in cert path and uh, path to the um, the full chain. Um, but this is kind of confusing to some of our users because um, a lot of them just know their uh, like they manage their certificates using the certificate names. Um, so mine are a bit confusing because I use a bunch of testing domains. Um, and usually these will have like distinct names. Um, yeah, um, so it's not great from a like UX perspective um, to require users to supply uh, paths to specific certificates and instead if they could just submit, if they could just do it using a certificate name, that would be a lot better. Um, so that is the change we are going to try and implement. It should be straightforward, I hope. Um, okay, so I know that revoke is defined in this main file. Or like 
the high level revoke sub command that is. Um, okay, so we're here. Um, uh, so here, uh, I think it just first tries to find your um, key. So. And I see, um, I guess some users specify their key path. Um, if for some reason your account key is missing. Um, I don't think very many people use this option though. Um, and then here it just determines it um, from your account. Um, so your, when I say your account, I mean like when you first use CertBot to get a certificate, um, an account is created uh, on Let's Encrypt for you. And we store all those details, and I think like we hide them away from the user. Um, see, and the actual revoking happens here. Um, and I, I see that there's references to uh, the cert path here, and uh, where else? And here. So it's all over the place. Um, okay. So I'm just going to put a breakpoint here just because I know that if I forget to do this now, um, and when I start changing the code and like run it, um, I don't want to accidentally actually revoke any certificates I have. Um, and putting the breakpoint there will stop me from doing that. <laughs> um, okay. So I think the easiest way to do this would be to just at the very top, if config dot cert path is none and config dot cert name um, this is where I want to put the stuff stuff goes here um, otherwise if you um, if you've gotten to the point where you so you've somehow managed to call revoke and you don't have cert path or cert name defined then I should raise an error if that doesn't make any sense or something okay um, so um, so we need a way of taking a cert name and finding the cert path that goes with it and I know that a few months ago, I wrote a function like that somewhere. I don't remember what file I put it in. Maybe it was in cert manager. Okay, not update sim links, not rename lineage, not that. Okay, lineage for cert name. That's almost what we want, not quite. Domains for cert name, no. Acceptable matches, nope. Okay, I don't, I don't think it's in this file. Um, let's see. Mm -hmm. Ah, storage. Okay, it's probably in storage. Ah, cert path for cert name. Yes. So it even says. It says here in the doc string, if cert name was specified, but you need a value for cert path. Yes, this is the this is the one we want. Okay, so we just set the storage cert path. Oops. For Okay, and then we pass in config and config dot cert name. Um, okay, that should work. I don't know if the storage imported anywhere. Okay, cool. Do not need to 
import that. Alright, um, and then the way that we print messages. I don't totally remember. I think it's this thing. I just want to raise an exception. Never mind. sure that the old way works, which is when you pass in the path. So probably have that in my history. Revoke. Yep. So that works. It gets to the breakpoint just fine. Um, so, what about if we try passing in a certain name? Um, okay, it says error, argument, cert path is required. Um, okay. So I know that certbot has like a bunch of command line argument parsing that happens before it gets to like um, any of the main places where these subcommands are defined. So let's go see what is happening there. I know that's in CLI.py. Just look for revoke. Okay, usage. So I'm going to need to update this um, usage string as well. Um, This is for some of the testing stuff. Okay. I 
I see. So here is where we're adding the cert path. Um, flag to the revoke command and it I guess it's failing because it's set to, to true required to set to true so maybe it's not required anymore false will it work oh yeah it works um, did it actually work what is the value of cert path did it get set correctly yep cool um, uh, all right. Um, I guess that's it. Um, now let's see if the tests will pass with these changes introduced. And I will also need to add a few more tests um, to make sure that um, certain name, like parsing certain name works. Um, yeah, and I see the, so I need to add a few more unit tests and also here's an integration test that I'll need to add eventually. So let's run the tests. Not that test, yeah, these tests. Okay. And these are going to take a few minutes, so I'll see what's going on in the Twitch stream. Um, uh, what messages two lines up? I don't know. short message. Okay, so the tests have finished running. Um, I just jumped to the end. Whoa, they all passed. Amazing. <laughs> Usually when I make changes, lots of things break. <laughs> okay, um, so... Someone in the Twitch chat 
pointed out that I missed a doc string, like updating one of them. So let's do that before I start writing tests. Um, also, the live stream is going to end in about five minutes. Um, so, two lines up. So I said two lines up. Presumably they mean two lines above where I made changes. So let's just jump to where I made changes. Oh yes, good catch. Ooh, what's going on? Nice. Thank you, Twitch stream viewer, for catching my mistake. So in manage certificates, manage certificates. Oh yes, man, I missed quite a few. Let's just go back and check all the places where revoke is mentioned. Okay, so these are correct. all of them. Um, in command overview, did I miss another one? Command overview. I think I got this one. Yeah, okay. Okay, um, so it's been one hour since the stream has started. I, um, obviously there's like one minute left, so I don't have time to um, write tests for this, but I don't think it will be too difficult. Um, yeah, uh, so I'll stop here. Um, thank you for watching. Um, uh, if you like the stream, um, you should let us know, uh, maybe on Twitter or by s sending an email to info at EFF.org, um, or just like posting in the Twitch chat. Um, maybe we'll do some more. Um, and if you really like CertBot and want to support our work, um, you could um, look through the good volunteer tasks label we have, which I think someone posted a link to. Uh, it's actually, we renamed it recently to Good First Issues. Um, yeah, and we can help you um, contribute and we can like walk you through the process and answer any questions you have. We're really friendly. Um, so you can contribute to CertBot um, or you could join the EFF. Um, uh, that's one thing you could do. Um, I think, uh, you, or you could also donate to Let's Encrypt. Um, yeah. Uh, and I'll stick around for a few minutes and answer any questions in Twitch, but the stream is over. Thank you all for watching. Um, this was lots of fun. I'm surprised at how much work I got done, and <laughs> it was much less of a disaster than I was expecting. Um, so I'll hang around in the chat room, but I'm going to cut off the streaming now.